Hey everyone, welcome back to Paul Paul's Workshop. Today I want to show you the new Sculpin S30 series laser. It's got some nice new features on it that I think you're going to really like. In addition to that, we're going to put it to the test and we're going to engrave and cut out some Christmas decorations. If you have one of the older models of the Sculpin lasers, you're going to notice immediately some significant upgrades. This, for an example, is the Sculfin S9 laser, which has been fantastic in the shop. But as you look at the brand new Sculfin S30 series, there are some significant upgrades. The first thing I want to point out to you is the limit switches. This is the limit switch that's on the Y-axis. And if we come right over here now, I can show you on the X-axis the other limit switch. And next, we have a linear guide rail. That linear guide rail is new, no more wheels, no more slop, and no more having to adjust the wheels as you used to have to do on the Sculpin S9. The linear rail actually is available to be able to put onto the Sculpin S9, but the S30 series already has that included. I want to talk about the air assist because this is completely different. This air assist is actually connected directly to the computer. The nice thing about this, in the Lightburn software, you're able to turn it on and off by the computer itself. And this is a major, major advantage because if you're like me, there are times when I started a project and I wanted to have the air assist pump on and it wasn't on and I had to rush over and turn it on. Well, that can affect the quality of your project. Now, you don't have to worry about that. With this connected directly to the control board and controlled through the Lightburn software, you're able to manage it much, much better. It's also important to note that the air assist pump and the hose is all included with this new laser. The cable management has also been simplified and they give you everything that you need, including these little blue Velcro strips. With the exception of the limit switch is attached right up here on top of the gantry, this gantry is completely fully assembled. There is no real extra work that you have to do other than attach the laser itself and put the different cables and the hose on. Everything else is completely pre-assembled. The limit switch is so easy to put on. It literally has one screw that you need to screw in and that is it. The only thing you have to do is align it and the alignment is very easy. The limit switch has to hit this vertical back plate and once you have that aligned, tighten your screw down and the installation of the limit switch is complete. As far as the Y-axis limit switch, the installation is just as easy. One screw and that's all. The alignment actually is already taken care of. This limit switch is activated by the wheel as the gantry moves down along the Y-axis. And there's really no adjustment that's necessary. The alignment will be perfect. One word of caution that I want to point out to you. This air hose, you have to route it very carefully. Because if it's routed incorrectly, that line is going to kink. Now in shipping, you can see that kink right there. That is something that still is going to bother me. This is a very soft uh, hose. And I'm hoping that that will you know, work its way out and not become a problem. But it's very, very important to make sure that the airflow is able to get through this hose and it's not kinked. So be careful on how you route it. I highly recommend using the Lightburn software. And when you open this up, the first thing you want to do is go to the devices. And that's under the laser tab. And what you will be able to do is set up this brand new laser in the Lightburn software. Because there are a few settings that we need to take a look at. When you click on the devices, the first thing I want to do is create this manually. I find it's a lot easier to be able to do that using the manual setting and put in all of the different figures manually. The first setting that comes up, you have to select the laser and the controller, and it is the gerbil. So I'll click on that, but you can see there's a wide range to choose from. It is a serial USB port. We'll click on that, and then I can name it, and I'm going to call this the Sculfin uh, S30. So I'll just type that in, and then the next step 
is to be able to set up the size. Now this is actually in inches. So mine is 15.75 inches. If you're looking at millimeters, that would be 400 millimeters. And then on the y-axis, that is going to be 410 millimeters, or it's going to be 16.14 inches. Then hit next, and it moves you to the origin of the laser. And it's the front left corner. So to highlight that, now I personally don't like the auto home, so I turn that off. Now granted, this is a personal preference, but I like to be able to home the machine myself rather than have it auto home when I turn it on. When you click on next, you're gonna get a summary screen and you can verify all of the different settings. If everything looks good, just hit finish and now it is set up. And you'll see it right there in the display. So click okay. And now there's a couple other things that we need to be able to take a look at before we're ready to engrave. The next step, come up to the top and click on the edit menu, come down to device settings. This will open up a window. You want to verify that the error assist is set for the M8. In this case, it is. So just click OK. One remaining step, come back to the edit menu, drop down to the machine settings. This will open up a window and you need to come right over here to the homing cycle. Make sure that this is set for true or it's turned on. That way, when you click on the homing button, it will actually home the machine. So hit OK, and we're ready to go. So I want to hit the home button, and we'll take it right down to that point. And I'm using the absolute coordinates. And I have the board that's in the machine laid out. I want to be able to go right over to that corner. So just by clicking that and hitting this point right there, the laser will move right to that point. And you can see the laser did in fact move exactly where it needed to be. So that gives me the exact position. And if I catch this on the back side, you can see the actual blue dot right there. Now this is 1% power. And it's still a good idea to use the glasses, but this is where you can actually verify the location. I want to go over to my cuts and layers now. With this identified as my actual work surface, I'm going to set this up on the cuts and layers, and I'm going to set this at a different layer. I don't want this to be on this layer. I'm going to put it over here on this toolpath layer so it will not uh, cut. I can frame it, yes, but there's no output. At this point, let's go down to the art library and find a project to be able to engrave. And I have a number of them right there. I want to bring in this one right here. We'll add that to the graphics. And we're going to change this to a line for the red. And then the blue is going to be able to engrave. So let's bring that right over here to this bottom corner. We'll put it right in there. And now the red is going to actually cut out and the blue is just going to engrave. I zoomed in so that you can see this better. This will actually on the red line be my cutout and the blue is going to be the engraved portion. I want to make sure that the blue is engraved first and then once the blue is completely done, then we'll switch over and have this cutout on the uh, red tool path. I'm gonna come down to my library and we're gonna come over into my pine. And I wanna be able to do a medium engrave. Let's see, I need this on the blue. We're gonna have that on medium and we'll add that to the blue layer. Now for the engraving portion for this blue tool path, I do not want to have the air assist on, so we'll turn that off. And then for the cutout on the red, I do. So I will turn the air assist on, and that way it'll control it automatically. Now I'm gonna do this in three passes. I'm not sure if it's gonna need three passes, so we'll take a look and see. So with this all set, the only thing that's left to do is grab the glasses and start the engraving. 
I do like to frame the project just to make sure. So we'll click on the frame. And you can see the machine over here moving and doing exactly where it's going to be engraving. And just to make sure, you can see the air assist is going to be off for doing the candy cane on the blue tool path. And then the air assist will turn on to do the red. And that's what I want. That way the computer will control everything. Now this laser is actually more powerful than I thought it was going to be. So I'm both happy and wish I had gone with some different settings. Because this candy cane is actually engraving too dark and really too deep. But at any rate, we're going to continue on. I think I could have used my light setting that I had in the uh, library and it would have worked out just fine. Again, I did not do a test grid beforehand. I just went ahead and set up the setting and started the engraving. Okay, it's doing the cutout now. And I want to come over here. This pump is so quiet. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but it is running. And it's doing the cutout just fine. And it looks like two passes is really all that's necessary because it has cut through now. So again, this laser is more powerful than I expected and it's doing an awesome job. So it is completely cut through at this point. So two passes would work real well instead of the three passes that I have it set up as. And it looks as if one pass would have cut through because I can see the reflection underneath. But I actually see it dropping out when it hits the second pass. And on the second pass, at the beginning of it, you can see the blue light underneath. So it's already cut all the way through. And there's the second pass. So very impressed with this laser. It's doing an outstanding job. So it completed the job. It moved back to the home position. And now I can just lift this off. That guys is absolutely beautiful. That looks perfect. If I get this really up close, you can see that fine detail right down in there on how it cuts it very, very clean and very sharp. Thank you very much for watching today. This new laser is absolutely fantastic. I absolutely love how the Christmas decorations turned out and I'm going to be making many more as I approach Christmas. The fact that it has the limit switches and the fact that it has an air assist that can be controlled with the laser is fantastic. That is a game changer for me because I cannot tell you how many times that I have forgotten to turn the air assist pump on or even turn it off when I was doing a project. And guys, it does affect the, the outcome of the project. So this way, it would be controlled by the computer so much better. So if you liked the video, by all means, 
give me the thumbs up, subscribe down below, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. So bye-bye now.